Sure, you can cope. Same way you always cope, by running away. That isn't fair. Going to Europe, what do you call that but running away? Daddy, I'm going to France on a job. About which you propose to tell me nothing? Because it has nothing to do with you. It's my life. And you have to let me live it in my own way. I know, I know. I'm sorry. It's just that you're all I have now. I want the best for you, whatever that may be. I just don't want to see you make a fool of yourself. Again? I didn't say that, Meredith. I'm all right, I tell you. Now, don't forget, you've been ill. <sighs> I won't forget. I don't think you're fit enough yet to go jaunting off to Europe. And if I listen to you, I never will be. Well, that's unfair, you Meredith. This is something different, something I've set up on my own, my project, and if I pull it off, it'll mean a whole new future for me as a financial journalist, not something that I've been pushed into by you. I've never attempted to push you into anything. I've simply encouraged you to return to your rightful place here on Wall Street with me. We've been through all of this so often. I tried. I tried hard. It didn't work out, and we both know it. Yeah, but going off to Europe... When do you sail? I'm flying. Flying? And you wonder why I worry about you every moment you're out of my sight. I have to. It'll be all right. I promise you I'll be all right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Captain Denver speaking. I'm sorry to say that after our delayed departure from New York, we've been flying into headwinds which have delayed us even further. Our estimated arrival time in Paris is now 11.17 local time. That's one hour, 20 minutes behind schedule. Sorry for the delay, which I hope won't have inconvenienced you too much. We apologize for the late arrival of the flight from New York. This is to inform passengers that luggage will be arriving on carousel number five. Thank you.
Je peux vous aider? Oh, uh, oui. Uh, je suis très... Uh, do you speak English? Of course. May I help you? <sighs> Thank heaven for that. Yes. I'm Miss Tolliver. Meredith Tolliver? Miss Tolliver? I'm here to see Mr. DePaul. I'm sorry, I'm terribly late. We were expecting a Mr. Tolliver at 12. Mister? Because of my name, do you mean? Oh, that sometimes happens. Oh, my flight was delayed. There was no telephone? There was a long line. I thought it was more sensible just to get here. One hour late. Uh, I'm sorry that things worked out this way, but now that I'm here, do you think I could make another appointment to see him later this afternoon, say, or tomorrow? Mr. de is out for the rest of today. Also tomorrow. He won't be in for the remainder of the week. He's an extremely busy man. I've just flown all the way from New York to interview him. Interview him? I'm a journalist. <laughs> but Monsieur de Paul doesn't see journalists. It's well known. He agreed to see me. There is nothing I can do. If Monsieur de Paul contacts the office, I shall convey to him your explanation. And my apology. Of course. Meanwhile, all I can suggest is that you telephone the office later. Au revoir, Miss Tolliver. Au revoir. Et merci. Damn. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Oh, hello. English? American. When I saw the legs, I said to myself, these are not French legs. What's wrong with them? Why, I do too. Nothing at all. They're perfection. Thank you very much. Um, excuse me, do you work here? Naturally, mademoiselle. For Mr. DePaul. Le patron? Francois de Paul, the mystery man himself. You have not met Monsieur de Paul? No, not yet, but I will. What's he like? Why do you ask? I'm a journalist. I want to interview him. But uh, Monsieur de Paul doesn't like journalists. It's well known. That's what people keep telling me. What's wrong with him? Nothing's wrong with him, but um, he's a very quiet man, reserved. Uh... <laughs> well. Maybe, uh, maybe he has some big secret to hide. Well, it is my opinion that Monsieur de Paul wishes to keep his private life private. But that, of course, it's only an opinion. Of course. Je dois porter ça à la comptabilité. J'en ai pas pour très longtemps. D'accord, Monique. Y a pas eu d'autres messages pour moi? Non. Enfin, quelque chose d'autre, mais pas très important. Et puis, je vois que vous en êtes arrangé. Au revoir, Miss Tolliver. There's just something about her. Mm. You don't like Monique. And Monique does not like me. She's not going to help me see Mr. DePaul. She protects him. That's all. Perhaps I could help. You? I have a little influence with Monique. I just want him to know that it's a genuine foul up and I'm truly sorry. And would he please give me another chance? I will see what I can do. You could give me a ring. Or you could ask Monique to call me. <laughs> I'm staying at the pension of Madame Hibert. Not at the Hotel Grand Louis? No, I'm not on expenses. You'll call me then? I shall see what can be done. Great. I'll give you a lift back if you like. Oh, no, that's OK. I can walk. <sighs> but you could tell me where it is. 
Yes. Turn right at the bottom of the drive, into the village, past the church. It's quite a way. That's all right. I'll manage. Ah, nous pensions que vous vous étiez perdu, entrez donc. Je vous attendais à 10 heures, moi. Alors, je me disais, mon Dieu, mademoiselle Oliver, où peut-elle être Et je... Hein L'entrée aussi. Je comprends pas. Oui, excusez-moi. Avec Joe Oh, monsieur Fille, voilà notre sauveur. Un interprète. Voilà. American Yeah. I hope your French is better than mine. Hi, Phil Bundy. Meredith Tolliver. Oh, monsieur Fille, vous voulez être assez gentil pour m'aider, voilà. Mademoiselle est notre nouvelle pensionnaire au numéro 3. Ah oui. Vous voulez lui expliquer pour le réfrigérateur, la douche, le... Pas de problème, madame Hébert. Je vais lui expliquer et tout ira bien. Ah, merci beaucoup, monsieur Phil. Soyez béni. Vous êtes si gentil, si serviable. Mais c'est avec plaisir, madame. Well, it looks like I've been elected to reveal to you the secret intimacies of madame Hébert's plumbing. Merci beaucoup. In your room, I believe. Old Mother Hebert is terrified. Folks don't understand electricity, especially when it comes to heating water for a shower. She's convinced somebody's going to do something disastrous. Like blow a fuse? Hey, this place is something else. I've never been in this room before. Presidential suite at Madame Hebert's. Not exactly in the Hilton class. Oh, no, but Compared with my garret, this place is a palace. Wow. An almost modern icebox. Empty. You want lunch? No, I, I haven't unpacked yet. I have work to do. Okay. How about uh, dinner this evening at the Sans Souci? I, I, don't, I don't know. Oh, don't worry. The Sans Souci isn't all that grand. I eat there all the time. Today I got paid for some music lessons I've been giving, and I can even treat you to the Sans Souci Special. But I couldn't. Don't worry. Everybody here is on a limited budget. Nobody can afford to spend a fortune on food. We don't have a fortune. All right. I'll come. But I do want to pay for my share. I was hoping you were going to say that. It's a deal. A deal. What I really would like now is a shower. Uh, do you, in fact, know how to work this thing? Ah, huh. Well, it looks efficient enough to me. Late 19th century, I presume. I tell you what, I can always stick around and operate it for you if you like. You know, I can cope. Anything you say. What did you say your first name was? Meredith. Meredith. Meredith Tolliver. 7.30, okay? 7.30. Great, see you then. I dropped out of everything. School, college, family, job, you name it. Well, how do you earn a living? Oh, this and that. 
As long as it's faintly legal and I don't need a work permit. I teach English and uh, the flute. Not necessarily at the same time. Uh, got back Madame Solange here when necessary. I take anything that's going in the day labor in life. But no real job, no ambition? No. <laughs> See, I think my problem is I've got a fatal flaw. I suppose you can call it my quest. A quest? Hmm? Oh, do tell me. I'll buy it. I have. I've got this uh, burning ambition to find the perfect woman. <laughs> and you haven't found her? No, I found her. I found her. I keep finding her. Every week I find her. A different perfect woman every week. And perfection wears off. Too right. So it starts off so promisingly. I, I suddenly see her. Across a crowded room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, this is it, perfection. So it's so enchanting, so ravishing. But when she starts to talk... Meredith. Yes. You and I ought to spend some time together while you're here. I mean, you know, two Americans abroad, staying by each other. I don't know, I think you'd get very bored. I'm very far from perfect. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. I mean, hell, you're all right. A bit fussy with your food, maybe. Monsieur Phil. Téléphone. Oui, madame, j'arrive. Excuse me, huh? Could be work. Day labor or another perfect woman? Uh, honest buck, I hope. Madame, <laughs> 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 Oh, Mademoiselle, you have no appetite. What? Oh, no, the meal was lovely. I enjoyed it. But you have eaten nothing. Oh, that's not true. I, I ate a lot, really. I ate more than I usually do. It was the best meal I've had since I don't know when. I thought Americans enjoyed their food like Monsieur Phil. I did, really, I did. Maybe I'm just a little tired. I'm sorry. Oh. OK. It was for you. <clears throat> My name is Belle. Rang. There was a message for you. Francois de Paul will see you at 2.30 tomorrow. Oh, will he? You must have something going for you. I mean, normally, he won't allow a journalist near him. Don't tell me. It is well known. Monsieur de Paul. Miss Tolliver. Welcome, Miss Tolliver. Mr. de Paul? The same. Very funny. I'm glad you think so. Why all the games? Why the performance? You arrived late for your appointment. It wasn't my fault. No matter. Grab your city. The launch of the Chateau Paul Franco American Enterprises arises from two major factors. First, a desire to combine the historic traditions of French wine production with the unparalleled marketing expertise available in the United States. Second, 
to eliminate the widespread snobbery associated with wine by bringing together the traditions of France and the climate of California. Am I going too fast for you? Mr. DePaul, if I had wanted this kind of information, I would have stayed in New York. You're reading me your initial press release, which was issued three months ago. I know about your Californian project. That's not why I'm here. So, how may I help you further? You're a financial journalist, I gather. A Wall Street commentator. For the last eight months, a regular contributor to the New York Financier. I have nothing more to add to the financial statement issued to the press on the 7th of last month. You don't understand. My commitment to the financier doesn't stop me from freelancing. That's what I'm doing now. Yeah. I'd like to do a personal profile on you, the man behind Chateau Paul, the real Francois de Paul. It would be the first of a series that I'm planning on outstanding financial brains of the decade. You flatter me, Mr. Oliver. But alas, I'm afraid I cannot help you. I'm always willing to see that the press are fully informed on matters of business. But I take a particularly firm stand on personal privacy. I do not give personal interviews of such a nature. Then why did you agree to see me? You said in a letter that the reason you wished to see me had nothing to do with the newspaper. Then that's true, it hasn't. You carefully failed to reveal your true purpose. It should have been evident to you from any research you may have done that I wouldn't grant such an interview. I don't suppose that the reason you agreed to see me is because my last name is Tolliver. I expected the son. I didn't know there was a daughter. My visit here has nothing to do with my father. I regret, Miss Tolliver. I can be of no further service to you. We're wasting each other's professional time. Good afternoon, Miss Tolliver. You mean you won't help me? No. Very well. But I give you fair warning. With or without your help, I intend to get the story. Good afternoon. One moment, Miss Tulliver. Yes. I want it, Miss Tulliver. In an entirely cordial and unprofessional spirit, would you do me the honor of dining with me this evening? Go to hell. What do you mean you don't know where she is? She works for you, doesn't she? Now listen here, Latimer. As of this moment in time, you are employed to run a newspaper. Now, this is a situation I can very easily change. So you find out where she is and what the hell she's doing. Okay? Meredith, where Port art thou, Meredith? Hello, Romeo. What are you doing skulking in your room? Why aren't you out enjoying the sun like everybody else? Maybe you could help me. Do you know anyone who knows Francois de Paul? Well, everybody knows him. Tell me. Well, what do you want to know? Everything. I don't know everything. He's rich, well connected. Sportsman. Good company. A bit reserved, maybe. Women? Sure, they hang around him like bees around honey. Come on, with his looks and his loot, he's the kind of guy who can easily attract the perfect woman. What's he hiding? Francois de Paul's a very nice guy. You'd like him if you got to know him. 
Does anyone? What are you doing tomorrow? Are you busy? No, not especially. Why? What would you say to the idea of an adventure? Something completely different? All right. I'm usually up for something completely different. Come ballooning with me. Ballooning? Yeah, hot air ballooning. I'm part of a pursuit crew, and uh, we're one short for tomorrow. Make up the numbers. Hot air ballooning up in the sky, ballooning? Well, no, the pursuit crew doesn't fly. We just uh, chase around the countryside trying to figure out where the damn thing's gonna land and try to get there before it does. It can be fun. All right, I'll go ballooning with you. Good. As long as I don't have to go up in one. Great, I'll bring a jacket along for you. It gets kind of cold at five o'clock in the morning. Five? They're beautiful. You didn't tell me. Yeah, they kind of get to you, don't they? Which one's ours? It's blue, white, and red, and it's called Cloud Waltzer. Cloud Waltzer. It's it right there. Come on. Oh, oh no. You know Monique? Unfortunately. Why unfortunately? I've been trying to get on her good side for months now. I wouldn't bother. First of all, she's a bitch. Second of all, she's far too intelligent to be the perfect woman. What is she doing here? Why, good morning, Miss Tulliver. You warned me you would be persistent. I hadn't realized your resolution would lead you to these lengths. Well, I seem to have been drafted into your pursuit team. And what has happened to the smart executive suit? The understated jewelry, the high heel shoes. Ballooning is one of my hobbies, too. Yeah? I've been ballooning since almost before I could walk. In that case, I must be deeply honored. Miss Tolliver, you are lying through your teeth. Today we have a new crew member, a distinguished visitor from New York, Miss Meredith Tolliver. Meredith, may I present Jean-Paul Raymond? And I think you already know Monique. With the strength of the wind as it's done here, I suggest it would be wisest for my passenger in the balloon to be the lightest of you. So... Me? One of your hobbies? Come along, Caliber. Hey, I told you to the cafe? Oui, oui, cafe, c'est une bonne idée. Bonjour dans la voiture. We must take off, no time to delay. The beauty of ballooning in this part of France is that we have ideal weather conditions, especially in summer, as no doubt you have already realized, Miss Tolliver. What's the matter? I thought you said. Tolliver, open your eyes. Mm. Open your eyes. I can't. You must open your eyes. Please just get me down. I'm alone. <laughs> You've 
never been in one of these things before, have you? You shouldn't have done it. It's foolish to pursue your story to such length. I didn't... I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't mean just... Please get me down. Don't worry. It's so delightful up here. Oh, don't. I'm not attempting to add to your misery, Miss Tulliver, I assure you. Just get me down. You don't know what you're missing. Freedom, the peace, the tranquility. Up here in the kingdom of the birds, the angels. That's better. Now take courage. Look around you. Look at all this magnificence. It's all right. We are protected up here. Protected? Yeah, of course. We balloonists, we have our own special blessing. May the winds welcome you with softness. May the sun bless you with warm hands. May you fly so high and so well that God joins you in laughter and sets you gently back into the loving arms of Mother Earth. <laughs> well, that's beautiful. So is that, look. Wonderful. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I didn't know it could be like this. No. No, I was always terrified of flying. It is well known. <laughs> where are we going? Over there is where we were going. We're going? Yes. This event is what we call flying. Balloons take off from different launching sites towards a target area. You see over there? Mark to the left of the river. Whoever lands closest, fastest, wins. Messed it up for you, didn't I? I made you lose time. It's of no consequence. Well, I'm sorry. So you should be. <laughs> but I'm not sorry about this. It's so wonderful. You write about it being the kingdom of angels and birds. I feel like a bird. I could stay up here forever. <laughs> Turn deserves another. Thank you. <laughs> Phil, vous voulez m'aider, s'il vous plaît? J'arrive, j'arrive. <laughs> you did well. My congratulations, Mr. Oliver. Tomorrow at 10, I take you to my vineyards. What am I going to learn about you in a vineyard? Isn't that for you to discover? Okay. After all, you are the journalist. Huh? <laughs> Bye. There's nothing old fashioned about this. If it's to be profitable in the wine game, as you call it. 
must be modern and efficient. I like things to function efficiently, Tolliver. <laughs> Wine, hot air balloons, cars. And visitors who call on time. You're a strange mixture. Naturally, your personality is so simple and straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> My father believes that instead of fooling around trying to be some kind of writer, as he puts it, I ought to be with him, helping to run the Tolliver Empire. It is a most distinguished empire. I would have thought for an ambitious young woman. Well, yes, I tried. I tried. I spent a year, two almost, wasted. Trying to learn, trying to be what my father wanted of me. You see, after Rory died... Rory? My brother, my twin brother. Oh. He and my mother were killed in a plane crash. I'm sorry. It was five years ago. That's why you were afraid of flying now. Yeah, my father and me both. Then you were very brave yesterday coming up in Tadawalski. I didn't seem to have much choice. <laughs> you tried to take your brother's place? I tried. <laughs> Hard. Rory was good. He was ambitious. He would have made another great Tolliver if he'd lived. I could never seem to... Find the enthusiasm. The heir apparent must want to rule. But all the pressures, the demands, I got ill. I was ill. Sick. Ill. Play the flute. <laughs> yes, Meredith, I wouldn't lie about a thing like this. Phil, is the bal de tournée important? Balloonist ball? <laughs> I should say so. That is the day in the social calendar here. That's what I thought. Dressy? Ma'am, for the balloonist ball, even I have got my tuxedo out of hock. You going? I'm chosen to partner with the fair Monique. Ah, oh, I see. You been invited? Uh, Francois, Mr. DePaul asked me to go. Meredith Tolliver, you cannot stand up a man like Francois DePaul.
What does it feel like to be the belle of the ball? I know that's meant as a compliment, but not if you listen to Phil. What has Phil to do with it? According to him, all beautiful women are brainless. Could be in for a surprise. <laughs> I think it might be wise to emulate the example of a distinguished predecessor. Cinderella, balloonist's functions can become remarkably silly as the evening wears on. <laughs> Past experience advises me now is the time to depart before the atmosphere deteriorates into a state of idiocy and anarchy. <laughs> Whatever you say. <laughs> Where's your coat? It was such a lovely evening, I didn't bring one. But it will be cold now. I can cope. Wait here. than its owner. I couldn't possibly accept this. Will you deny me the pleasure of making you a small gift? No, 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 I, I, I didn't mean... You're quite right. Preposterous. A grown man and women making love in a car. Like a pair of teenagers. Oh, that's not what I meant. What do you want? I don't know. Francois, please take me home. I could never have taken you for a coward. I'm not a coward. No. Francois, I'm just being cautious. No pressure, okay? Good night. Hi. 
You look sensational tonight. A knockout. Yes? Ray Latimer for you, Mr. Tolliver, on line four. Thanks. And about time, too. She's where? With who? What in hell's name's... She's doing what? Hold on. Get me the travel department, and fast. Are you sure that's all you want? I'm positive. Croissants. Croissants au chocolat, la confiture. No, please. Did you have a good night? Here I go again. You know, I'm beginning to have doubts about me. Could it be that my failure to find the perfect woman could have something to do with my being less than the perfect man? Never let it be said. You enjoyed yourself, didn't you? You looked as if you were. Let's just say I had a little trouble with uh, the Cinderella syndrome. Well, Prince Charming turned into a rat. There was nothing wrong with Prince Charming. Good. Madame Hubert said I might find you here. Can I get you a cup of coffee? Yes, strong black, no sugar. Uh, I thought I was the only one who had a hangover. No hangover, just the way I like it. How was last night? Just the way I like it. Sorry about last night. No, I was to blame. Blame? Had nothing to do with it. You look tired. I couldn't sleep. At five o'clock, I was up there in Cloud Walter, looking down over the village. All I could think about was uh, you sleeping. I couldn't sleep either. Will you have dinner with me this evening? If you permit me to interview you this evening. Very well. We'll dine at the chateau. Okay, if it's not putting your staff to any trouble. There will be no staff. It's the night off. Who's going to cook? Well, uh, I will permit myself the indulgence of being a chef. You still come? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... Under no other circumstances will I grant an interview. Then I'll be there. My father built up the business his father had bequeathed to him. Once this was a small, unimportant chateau, he made Chateau Paul into a big and successful enterprise. Part of the reason for my very existence was to inherit, to carry on the line. How could I refuse? Didn't you find it intolerable to have your life mapped out for you like that? prospect of becoming a millionaire cushions one against such hardship. I was never offered inducements, but then nothing oh, was... Oh, but more wine. If the waiter is most remiss in the performance of his duties, your glass is empty. After the interview. So what next? 
ambitions, expectations. I can't tell you if I achieved what was expected of me, I don't know. Happily or unhappily, as the case may be, my father died before official control of the business was handed over to my care. I don't know if he would have approved my stewardship. One could never have known. The old man would never have handed over the reins voluntarily. Only death could force him to relinquish his lifelong passion, the business. Chateau Paul. You're dodging the issue. You're not talking about yourself. You're talking about your family. There are other and far more interesting topics I would rather discuss. That thing out. But you haven't really told me anything about yourself. What would you want me to tell you? How many tooth fillings I have? Uh, what uh, aftershave I use? Which women have I slept with? No, of course not. I don't want background. I want the real you. How am I ever going to write the truth about you? If you never let anyone get close enough to discover anything about you. But you've been with me closely and constantly throughout these past days. Have you formed no opinion? That isn't the same thing. Isn't it? What are we but the sum of other people's opinions? <laughs> what do you think I have learned about you in that time? That I'm a pushy American who doesn't know when to take no for an answer. Do you expect other people to? That isn't the same thing either. I will tell you what I have learned. That you are the child of a rich and powerful man. A father not only my own. <laughs> that he has dominated your life, tried to direct it. And especially so since the unhappy death of your brother. And that you are now determined to find and to make a new success in a profession of your own choosing, without his aid, without his money, that you've been ill, perhaps very ill, and that you have not yet entirely recovered your strength and your spirit. What else? How do you know all this? You told me. Perhaps not in so many words, but of course, I'm not a trained observer, I'm like a journalist. <laughs> what else have I learned? That you're charming, delightful, beautiful. Don't sit. <laughs> Hell! <laughs> now I learned that you are also prone to clumsiness. Come along, Tolliver, it's not the end of the world. Your dress would be a ruin unless we put it to soak immediately. I'll find you something to wear. Nothing if you're just gonna fit. I think I can find something that will fit. Now take your dress off. Not here. No. But you see.
Would you just leave me um, by myself for a second? I thought perhaps you might be awake by this time. Good morning. I've brought you coffee. What manner of breakfast would Madame prefer this morning? French, American, English? Thank you, I don't want any breakfast. To go ballooning on an empty stomach is not wise. You must eat something. I'll fetch you coffee. Sit down. Please, uh, leave me alone. I don't want any breakfast. I don't want coffee. I don't want anything.
What is it? Are you angry? No. Sorry? Of course not. Then what? I can't explain. Just leave it. Give me time. Just leave it. I can't leave it. Surely you must see that. Last night we were happy, totally, as close to each other as humans may ever reach. I knew you with every atom of my being, with my body, with my mind, skin, tongue, fingertips. This morning you're a stranger to me, why? You won't even show yourself? Are you afraid of me? No, of course not. You're afraid of the light. Is it possible for you only to be yourself in the dark? To make love only in the dark? Please just have patience with me, right? Patient. Patience doesn't come easily to a man in love. Now, dress yourself with these. Breakfast will be ready downstairs. I have made scrambled eggs and you will eat them. I will tolerate no discussion on the matter. <laughs> 